Er eldsneytismarkaðurinn framarlega í forgangsröðun þískra samkeppnisyfirvalda? I guess that um, this, uh, this topic is high on the agenda of every competition agency around the world because um, uh, fuel is important. Uh, it is extremely important. Just to give you an example, if you see a price rise here of a little bit than one cent throughout Germany uh, on the fuel market, uh, that makes, uh, looking at the whole economy, that makes a price rise of 1 billion uh, euros. So it is not only important for the individual driver, um, but it is also important for the economy as a whole. And um, so I do believe that every competition agency around the world is well advised uh, to take a close look at that market, not only for public reasons or political reasons, but also because it matters uh, to, the, to the economy as a whole. And if we look at the price differences here in Germany, which might be in the same city, um, that, that difference might be up to 10 cent at the same time. There you can see that also at the very end of that chain, the consumer can benefit enormously from a competitive market uh, in this fuel area. So I think every competition agency is really well advised for public reasons, for political reasons, for economic reasons, and for consumer protection reasons to take an extremely close look at this market. Hvernig er markaskerð þýska eldsneytismarkaðarins? I have done a, a market inquiry, a full-fledged market inquiry into the fuel sector back in 2011. Um, we have found in general that we have th three different levels uh, on this market. One is um, the production, that is the refining of crude oil. Uh, the second one is uh, the distribution, wholesale of fuels, and the third one are petrol stations, of course, that is the retail of fuels. Uh, as far as uh, the supply side for fuel is concerned, we have found that we have uh, a dominant oligopoly of companies here, five major oil companies. Uh, we found them uh, a dominant oligopoly um, for various reasons. One is that all of them are vertically integrated. Uh, another reason is that they have excellent access to refining companies here in, in Germany and uh, they all have a nationwide um, a network of petrol stations over here in Germany. So what we do right now, we are in a phase where we also keep on monitoring closely if that oligopoly uh, assessment is still uh, correct, but still in 2016, which means this year we found uh, that these five major oil companies still hold uh, a market share of 68%. Uh, have come up samkeppnisleg vandamál á þíska eldsneytismarkaðinum. Well, if you find a dominant oligopoly, um, I think uh, substantial competition policy, uh, problems might not be far away. <laughs> uh, so we took a close look at that. What we, what we saw is um, that uh, a question is always the access to refining products. Um, uh, that is refinery capacity in Germany or import because that is a key determinant for market power. In, in Germany, the refining uh, capacities are largely controlled by the major oil companies that I have just named. We have high barriers to entry uh, in this respect. Um, in particular, the dependent, the smaller uh, petrol uh, suppliers depend largely on these refinery capacities of the big oil companies. So we see here two dangers. One is that we might see a risk of sales below cost. Uh, that is uh, that a vertically integrated oil company offers the motorists uh, the fuel at a retail price, which is in fact below its own effective wholesale price. Another risk we see is the one of price squeeze uh, that is that the um, oil company offers motorists its fuel uh, in a lower retail price at its own petrol stations than it offers as a wholesale price uh, to the independent uh, competitors. Uh, one finding in the sector inquiries uh, was uh, that we took, a, we took a close look at the price patterns uh, on these markets. 
Uh, I think that is that is important to do because we have a market here before our eyes with a very high transparency. Um, oligopolists have a complete overlook of the price all over Germany at every single petrol station. That means we have an extremely uh, transparent market here. Um, but what we did not find is uh, any evidence uh, for an explicit coordination between the companies. But what, what we found when we look at these price patterns, we saw uh, a clear hint. Um, we saw a clear hint that there was a parallel conduct uh, because we saw price rises at a certain time on a certain day in a week and we saw how other companies followed that price rise with a certain gap of three or five hours that happened every week. Today the pattern is different but that is what we saw back in 2011. So uh, in a nutshell there is or there, there always was a possibility for the companies to coordinate their behavior due to their vertical integration, due to the high market transparency uh, and due to the fact that motorists, drivers, practically, practically have no power uh, at all. How a thisk samkeppnisyfirvöld eða stjórnvöld gripi til einhverja aðgerða vegna þeirra vandamála sem upp hafa komið? What, what we do for the time being is we have a very uh, close eye on the market. Uh, we, want, uh, the, we want to prevent that the structure or that anything else on this market gets worse uh, than it is today. Which means, in fact, that we have a quite strict um, merger control uh, regime in this area. The second issue is that we very closely monitor the market if we find any abusive uh, practices. I already mentioned the risk uh, of uh, price or margin squeeze. I already mentioned the risk um, of sales below cost. For the most important uh, feature, of course, was uh, that we have uh, set up a market transparency unit here in the Bundeskartell and in the Federal Cartel Office. So we collect all prices in Germany in real time here, and then we pass them, uh, we pass them on to so-called um, consumer information services. They have developed apps for your smartphone and they show you any price in Germany at any petrol station in Germany in real time. That is the first time from my point of view that we have a complete market transparency, not only on the side of the oil companies, but also on the side of consumers. And consumers can really compare prices. Um, in former times, they could not really compare. They were standing with their car in front of a petrol station. They had no idea how high the price was at the next petrol station if it, is, if it was not very, very close. So that is, uh, from my point of view, really a possibility to exert competitive power by consumers, by drivers, uh, on, on, um, on the oil companies. What we plan to do is, uh, that is the fourth um, measure, um, what we plan to do is to do a sector inquiry into uh, the, the question of access to refinery capacities. Refineries are important also for the retail fuel uh, market. Uh, and uh, to, look, to look into this and to examine more closely uh, the relationship between crude oil prices, uh, wholesale prices and petrol station prices. You are also very well of this phenomenon that is always called rocket and feathers. That is the suspicion that, um, that uh, fuel prices at the station follow uh, an increase of the wholesale price very quickly but that is different if, uh, if the prices decrease, uh, we might take a look into that. So that is in a nutshell what, what we have done uh, over the last years. As you can see, there was quite some activity in this market.